So having been uh, absolutely inundated by um, four people <laughs> to uh, explain about how I came to be where I am now, my amazingly lucrative, yeah right, career in fishery management. Lucrative uh, for the soul, but not so much for the pocket, I would, uh, that'd be fair to say. Uh, because obviously I absolutely love what I do, and I always have. Um, and I'll just uh, try and explain a bit about how it all started from, uh, from my point of view, really. Um, not very interesting to a lot of people, but it's something to do. Lockdown, everyone's putting shed loads of various content online. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do the same. There's no point tying rigs and that, because it's been done to death, and all the other fishy bits and pieces, so. It's just passing the time away, really. I haven't got the boys in the truck with me to annoy, so. I'll just annoy everyone else instead. So basically, I think when, uh, when the first memories I've ever got of fishing, we, we're from Suffolk. Suffolk, oi, oi, Suffolk people originally. And my dad, um, he was more of a biker really, he'd always had motorbikes, but he, uh, this is back in the day when you could go fishing on a pier and on the beach in East Anglia and catch 100 pound of cod and whiting, you know, it was amazing. And I always remember, before I, I ever went with them, they, they'd come home, him and a couple of his mates would come home, God knows, times in the morning, with bin liners, double up, doubled up bin liners full of fish. You know, and they were sort of, looking back, like, most of them were sort of three, three pound average, you know. So it was really, really good fishing back then. And because it was, you know, I'd always liked getting up in the mornings. Um, and it was that whole thing when I first went, we had to go to Felixstowe and it was cold and, and, and fishing on the pier. And I'd never done anything like, oh God, I don't know how old I was. I really, I, I have no idea, but really young. Um, I wouldn't like to guess, probably eight or nine, I think. Um, prior to that, I mean, I'd always been wanting to get in the water the whole time. I remember one memory when I was really little, we went to some, I'll clarify with my dad, I've done loads of research as you can see, as, as normal, but I'll, um, we were at some little holiday thing when I was really little and I was desperate to get in this fountain, this little pond thing, and it was dark, it was night time, and my dad let me go in there, and there was koi carp in there, and, and I remember going in there, and I don't think I should have done, but I've always, always wanted to be in water. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's partly, I mean, he was a police diver for a number of years and, and certainly pushed me in the direction of not being scared of water, because even this to this day, you know, we get a lot of people when we're out and about and they're so, so worried about the water. And the other thing is just because they're not used to it and obviously everyone's got their own stuff that they're, they're, they're uncomfortable with. Um, but mine was never water. I was always very comfortable in the water. I started swimming when, you know, very early age and got up to a pretty good standard. Um, I think it's the only thing I've ever won any competitive silverware in, only medals, little bits and pieces. But I did that and I absolutely enjoyed that. Um, and trained hard for that up until I was like mid-teens and that's sort of, you start having a pint and a fag and, and your times drop off. But uh, anyway, fishing, yeah, so Felix Do Pier, and one of the things I remember about that was you're standing on the pier and there's quite a lot of anglers back then, just with, uh, you know, random tackle. And uh, we used to go with this lovely old guy called H, Harold, um, really lovely old guy, and, and he, he, he was sort of a bit of a Yoda character. He just used to smoke rollies the whole time. He used to go around there and he, he's always smoking a rollie and he's a little tiny hunched up man. Uh, and his wife was called Joyce, I think. And they used to live uh, in Stowmarket. And uh, lovely, lovely couple. Um, and they I think one of their sons, David Boast, he was a massive keen fisherman. I might be getting the names wrong. Huge keen fisherman, very good angler, really good uh, sea angler. He used to catch loads. So all the time, like, you're looking at people like that when you're young. Oh wow, wow, we must have catch loads of fish because my dad's catching some on Felix Day Pier. So, and I remember once going there and with H and um, uh, my dad, and the, the little joke used to be because you'd stand there, leg either side of the rod, looking at the rod tip on the pier, and, and, and as soon as you get a bite, uh, you'd reel in and. Uh, but the thing to do would be to go up behind the person who stood either side of the rod and just knock the back of their rod with your foot without them knowing so it looks like they get a bite. And I always remember that because I used to do it all the time because I was a bit bored because not a lot was happening sometimes and I was cold. 
but that's how I really, that's the first, I think that's, in memory, that's the first time I went fishing um, on the pier. And then a couple of the older lads, I, I had a push bike, a couple of the older lads, um, with regard to freshwater fishing, we lived in a small village and just on a little road. And at the end of the road, there was a, a small farm pond and uh, a couple of the older lads used to go and fish it. And the, the farmer knew, he, he lived right there and he just dug this little pond. And uh, so I took my dad's um, boat fishing rod, six foot boat rod, which is literally a, a broom handle. And I had a, 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 I think he got me a second hand little small reel, because obviously a sea fishing reel was too big. So I had this tiny reel with like 20 pound line on it um, and a big hook. And I just went down there on my push bike. It's, it's 400, 500 meters from the house. Tiny, tiny pond, absolutely tiny pond. I'm down there with the kids and, and one of them catches a fish and I didn't know what it was. It was a carp and uh, it's about two pounds. And I was like, oh my God, it's amazing. Just on bread, just on bread. And I thought this is brilliant. Um, so I started going down there and I couldn't catch one. And, and I've, you know, I've got, Heavier light, heavy lights coming off the spool like this. I was getting all tangled up and massive hooks and silly rod was massive. So I didn't really deserve to catch one, but um, and you didn't have to cast. I mean, the, 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 the pond was twice as wide as the truck, you know, you, you're just flicking it out with bread. But uh, it, I was just intrigued and and I got bought, uh, parents got me like a, a, a little second hand kit and I loved it. Second hand kit, it was like this. This little, and I, I've still got, it's actually at the Carp Society HQ, one of them, at the museum now. And uh, this rod, it's like a match rod, and I kept it for years, and I caught a lot of carp on it later on, and it was just a Milborough match rod, I don't really know what it was. It was, it was 10 foot, maybe 11 foot, I'll have a look, and uh, very, very light, just fiberglass, just real simple. But I learned real quick that if I put light enough line on it, this was later on. If I put, I could flick a mixer, a single mixer, soaked obviously. That's how we used to do it, really, um, on a hook quite a long way. I didn't used to like using controller floats. But anyway, back to where we were. This, this little pond. So when I got that, I was well away because I used to um, just soak up all the information. And, uh, there was quite a few people who I was um, as, as I got a bit older. I was looking at, and they were. You could tell they were good anglers. I knew what they were doing. But at that point, I was just like happy to go down to this pond on my push bike with bread. I think for the for at least the first year, I'd never done anything apart from just fish bread on the surface or just pinch it so it sunk. And I caught loads of fish out of that little pond and I loved it. It was just, oh my God, it was brilliant. I used to bike down there for a couple of hours, catch some fish and go back. And the pond's tiny. It's probably 30 meters by 10 meters, tiny. But for me, and I was tiny at the time as well, it was bang on and then um, so I got massively hooked and then uh, I got permission to fish uh, a small moat behind the back of the house you could walk across the fields really and it was neglect the, the moat and the house were neglected but some millionaire had bought it I think he had shares in Pleasure Hills and Madame Tussauds and all that and luckily I got permission to go and fish there and uh, there was golden orf rud and carp in there and again same old story I never changed anything I just took the rod the reel a landing net and a loaf of bread every time I went and at the time I used to uh, I was reading as all as much information as I could really early carp fishing magazine angling time anything I could get hold of or that my parents would buy me you know I'm still really really young I don't know how I was the push bike age um, and I was walk walk to the back of this moat catch a few fish and walk back um, and that, also, that's when I started to really, that young, um, chuck buckets of food at the fish because uh, the farm and family that, that did own all that stuff were called the Phoenixes, and um, they were obviously big farmers, and they had a barn full of wheat middlings and stuff, and I, and I they let me just take what I wanted out of there to chuck in the pond, because at the time they owned the moat. It went for a lot of changes of hand. So I was chucking buckets of food in there, just cereal, and. Um, and fishing and, and oh, I loved it. it was, I had it all to myself so you learn so much it's just my little thing and it was amazing and I, I, I could go down there and I caught monster golden orf and big rud this is before cormorants were a massive issue in, in East Anglia and that you know I, I think I must have been 10 or 11 around that age I don't know I can't remember 
yeah, very, really close to home, absolutely loved it, real simple, always with bread, always with bread. Occasionally, Dad had come with me and he, 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 liked, he liked fishing a float with sweet corn, and that's all he did. So he would do that and I'd fish with bread, and uh, it was brilliant, it was absolutely brilliant. And um, so I did that, I can't remember how long, for a long time. So I was mad keen on fishing, absolutely mad keen. We were, a few little holidays, I remember going to my dad once to Sax Mundum, to a little uh, a campsite, we stayed in the caravan with some friends, and me and the other lad were just fishing all the time, and I caught a, quite a big fish there. Um, every time we went away, I wanted to get in the water, go, go, go in the sea and swim, and anything to do with fish, and, and water, being in the water, absolutely hooked on it massively. Um, and I remember there's another pond we fished, and the older kids used to go down there and like smoke and barbecues and sort of, the farmer used to threaten to cut all the trees down. A very, very small pond in the middle of a field, really, really small pond. And the farmer used to say, right, if you lot don't stop having fires and stuff. And we, we, we'd go down there just for an hour fishing, again on our push bikes, two of us. And uh, eventually he did. He, he, he cut all the trees down and let them fall in the pond so no one could get access to it. Very small pond, probably, uh, probably 25 metres across, 30 metres across, something like that, in almost like a circle in the middle of a field. There was loads of carp, pike in it, and a few pike in it. And I always remember being at home, and someone came and knocked on the door and said, they've cut the trees down in the pond, the fish are dying. And I don't know, I mean, everyone knew I was mad keen on fishing at that age, but we went down with our push bikes, two of us, um, and we had like a, a bags on the back, and a rucksack and we and I was just going in with a landing net and a pan I had a pan a John Wilson pan landing net at the time and I kept it for years and it was big enough to put a big carp in but at the time a big carp to me was like six pounds so yeah I, I, I went in there and I remember catching um, a couple of these fish in a net thinking, what am I gonna do with them so I just put them in my bag and soaked the bag I mean I was soaked anyway got on our push bikes and just went to um, the local fishery which is we used to call it Tony Leeds it's called Riverside now and it's uh, it was like you know the only place we could go that was uh, within biking distance and all the kids went down there it was a bit rough and ready but in fairness you know it was just a lovely little pond to go fishing at it's very different now um, but yeah we were putting them in there because the fish were dying and we were kids you know and we we're like oh we don't want the fish to die and we moved a couple of pike um, and I can't remember how many carp we moved out of that pond, but we moved them from, from one to the other. And I reckon I was about 12 then. Yeah, I reckon 12-ish. Certainly not a lot older than that. So yeah, we did that, and um, and we put a couple of, I think it was a couple of ghosties in there, which I put in the the my local village green pond as well. Um, I don't can't remember why we did that, but we put them in the local village green pond at Harleston in the village and we put them in there and we used to go up there and it, I think because it was so close to home it was like you know a two minute bike ride and I remember going up there and we'd chuck food at them and all this that and the other and it used to be amazing later on we we then took took the fish out of there and, and put them in the other lake for for some free fishing I can't remember but, but yeah anyway it was very very young so that's basically how it all started I, I just I was I was just as much having as much fun just getting in the water even then and I think because I was swimming all the time as well, I really genuinely, I just wanted to be in the water. And because at the moat, I could get in the water and paddle around. Like if I was looking in, it didn't dawn on me just to put, you know, this, I had one rod and, and it never dawned on me to put a, a lead weight on and feel the bottom. I'd just get in the water um, just, with my, just with my socks on. I'd kick my shoes off and just go in with my socks and have a paddle. I'd always do that. I just always did get in and you learn so much. It's, it turns everything on its head. You think, oh my God, I've been fishing there. No wonder I wasn't catching anything. You know, you'd feel it's all sticks or you, and then you'd move them out of the way. Or it'd be hard and you go, oh, that's, that's a place. And then you'd make, make it. I remember once I got a bit of chalk um, and there was a bit on the, around the moat, there was a wall around the moat. And I was always fishing in one area. When, I, when the fish weren't on the surface, I'd pinch a bit of bread on and, and I, couldn't, I wouldn't catch them unless they were on the surface because I couldn't see them easy enough. It was a very coloured moat because it's full of little rud. Um, and when I got in the water the first time, I remember finding a spot, and I didn't really know what I was doing. 
was like, oh, how am I going to remember where this is? And I, just, I had a bit of chalk, because it's just like a chalk stone from around the pond. And I just put a line on the wall where it was. And from then on, it was easy, because I'd just go there. And if they weren't on the surface, and I'd always chuck the, the wheat stuff in that spot, um, and then later you learn, obviously, if you keep doing that, they're making that spot harder. Um, so I learned a lot of that about that when I was really young. This is this is while I was still at, at sort of uh, at school, you know, way before I'd, I'd, I'd even had an inkling of, of what I was going to do for, for a job. Um, so yeah, school. Um, I didn't mind school. A lot, of, a lot of good mates at school, but I didn't. I, I found it very dull learning about stuff I had absolutely zero interest in. So I was very easy, easily distracted, shall we say. Um, and then I didn't do great in my exams. Did alright but not brilliant, not as well as I was expected. I think I took my foot off the pedal a bit. I got some okay mock mock GCSEs back in the day. And then I was fishing all the time. I just wanted to go fishing all the time. And uh, back then you did this whole, uh, after you did your GCSEs, there was a year, uh, CPVE it was called at school. It's basically for the people who hadn't done very well, but they didn't really quite grasp what they wanted to do. So it was like an option. So you could go and do this year of, and it was a bit degrading really. I didn't want to do it, but I didn't have any choice. Um, and it was you sort of on a course with lots of um, kids who, who just didn't turn up to school at all really, and sort of some of them smelled bad and that. But it was it was quite embarrassing. So I, did, I started doing that, and to be honest, I used to bunk off and go fishing. And then the teachers said, um, what you know what do you want to do? It was, it was at a time where careers advisors were there and it was all nonsense, you know, you filled out all these forms. You, I'm going on, I'm probably uh, 15 now, I guess, just coming up GCSEs. I just, fin just finished GCSEs, so 16. Just wanted to go fishing the whole time. And uh, one of my teachers, Mr. Bailey, I'll never forget, he was a brilliant teacher at the, at the, at the, the high school. I might be getting confused which school he was at then. Might have been a middle school, but anyway, I remember he was a brilliant teacher. Uh, put me in contact with the Otley College. Um, and at the time, he said, oh, they're, they're doing a, a course, an outdoor country pursuits course, which has got fishing and stuff. I was like, oh, wow. And he said, you can go to that for one day a week and then carry on with this course until you finish this course. I was like, oh, it's amazing. There's a bus that you can get and all this and the other. So, um, and luckily, um, before it started, my friend, the first time I went on the bus and um, went past a river, it's near Thetford, on, sort of around that sort of area. And I thought, oh, river there so I ended up sort of going walking the river instead of going to the college and the one time I did go it was I realized they put me on a unit and it was a pig unit uh, with some savory characters and it was all about pigs and I had to put uh, overalls on and go and muck out pigs and I was like you know I was still very young and and uh, I said to the, the I said oh I said is there no no fish stuff and he said no no we're, we're developing the course so that put me right off. I was like, oh my God. So one day a week, long and the short of it, that, that it was on a Thursday, I was supposed to go, uh, supposed to go to uh, this college, sorry about all the, the bumping around. Um, so I'd just go fishing instead. I, I, I took a, a small rod with me and um, by this time I had a moped as well. So I had a bit, bit of freedom. So I'd basically use Thursday to go fishing and caught some lovely fish in the river, it was great. But then the college communicated with the, the school and realized I wasn't going and they caught up with me. And to be fair, that's what changed a lot for me. The guy from the college said, uh, look, I appreciate, you know, that this isn't quite what you had in mind, blah, blah, blah. You're doing just basic agriculture and all this, that and the other. And I didn't like it at all. It was, it was horrible, I didn't, I didn't know anyone. Apart from my mate Stewie, who was, who was going there. I can't remember what course he was doing. But I used to, he, he ended up, he used to give me a lift in the morning and then I'd go fishing. Sometimes with him, sometimes about. But the, the, the guy at the college said, oh, give this guy a ring. He might be able to, you know, give you some work experience. And it was uh, a guy um, called Tim. So I went home and um, spoke to this guy, Tim, and I'd said, I'd explained the situation and said, I, I'd love to, to, to sort of do some work. I didn't really, didn't know what they did, but I just knew it was something to do with fish. And basically they said, uh, have you got your own transport? I said, yes, I've got a moped. I'm proud of my little moped. Um, he said, right, can you be at this address at stupid o'clock? It was like crazy o'clock um, on the Monday morning or whatever. And I said, yeah, no problem. 
So, and I'd never been that far on my moped before. It's like 20 miles or 19 miles or something. It took me ages because the moped was really slow. So I went, um, went to Framlingham and I um, got in a pickup truck with these blokes and everything smelled damp and I was intrigued and uh, it was dark and I was, I was short then as well. I didn't, I, I sort of grew and at that time, almost a foot, I guess, because I used to be really short. So we, um, we just drove and drove and drove and drove and they didn't really even say much they were sort of I was like this is this is a bit weird and it was cold it was the winter um, when winters used to be cold you know and we ended up at Grafham or Pittsford I still can't remember which one it was to this day I've got a feeling it was Grafham but it was one of the three big reservoirs Northamptonshire way you got Rutland Pittsford and, and Grafham and they're all massive and they've all got loads of fish in but at the time we were there to try and catch coarse fish, the trout reservoirs, we were trying to catch coarse fish and uh, we had an echo sounder on the boat, you know, massive great big echo sounder, big big thing and uh, they just chucked me in at the deep end and put, give me some crappy waders which is, that's, that's par for the course, you start off with, with rubbish waders which didn't fit, they were too big, they leaked, I'd never been so cold, it was freezing, freezing cold. Um, and you're just watching them really and they're, they're chucking nets about and they're putting them in a boat and they're going out and they're doing all this stuff and I'm like this is this is horrible this is just horrible I'm freezing I'm just stood there like a lemon with these gloves that have got holes in and waders that have got holes in and stink of damp and other people's feet and I was just absolutely freezing cold and I was like well this is this is rubbish there's no fish you know I thought I was going to go fishing or do something fun and then they just say right pull this do this do that and it's all just standing there in the cold it was absolutely freezing it was foggy it was horrible freezing cold and I remember that when we were pulling these nets in and they were laying them and separating them and they were freezing on the floor and your waders were getting wet and then you they were they were getting fr frozen as well everything was getting frozen and um, it was horrible it was it was unbearable and I didn't have much kit on I was soaked you know I had a jumper and I mean they said dress up warm but I had a jumper and a so it was all soaked, didn't have a raincoat I don't think at the time, or if I did it was open. But yeah, I was just absolutely in bits, to the point where when they're saying pull the net, I'm there almost in tears. Um, never really done that much manual labour before, I had a paper round before that. Um, and it was horrible, and it took hours. And I thought, this is, why? This is, this is ridiculous, they're just pulling these nets, they're not even moving. And they did get stuck, and they had to go and free them, and cut them, and all sorts. And then I'd gone from being horribly cold and really upset and annoyed, thinking, well, this is, I'm not, I'm not coming back. This is it. I'm not coming back. This is, this is it now. I'm just going to go back and just say it was horrible and try harder at school. And then eventually the net came in after what seemed like 50 hours. And I didn't think there was anything in it. And then they pulled it up and it was amazing. There was just huge, great, it just erupted with, and I was like, it's just, it's just mad. I've never seen nothing like it. I mean, not, not many people I know will ever see that many fish anyway, you know, and we've obviously since then seen a lot more, but it was uh, it was just amazing. There was just huge amounts of bream, uh, pike, massive, it was like dinosaurs, just amazing. Um, and loads of trout, which never really interests me anyway, but just ridiculous amounts of fish. And then you don't, you're not cold then, you go from being freezing, 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 freezing cold, and this is what people don't get, to you're moving quickly and you're, you're active and you're, your blood's pumping and your adrenaline is like, oh my God, we just caught all these fish. But then straight away, you're chucking them in bins, putting them in the truck, weighing them up. And it's just, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just getting told, ordered about. But it was amazing. And it was, I just couldn't believe it. I was, you know, and I, was, I got home and I was knackered, physically knackered, just completely, my head was filled with, oh my God, this was, you know, and I had, I wasn't cold at all then. I'd gone from being freezing, the coldest I think I'd ever been, to just so warm, thinking, oh wow, I'd never seen fish like that. You know, a lot of people will live their lives and never see that many and that, that sort of fish that we saw. And within, within a couple of weeks of doing that job, I'd seen pike to over 30 pounds and held pike to over 30, but I've still got a picture of me somewhere holding a 37 or 38 pound pike. And that was it then. You know, I'd landed. I, I, I was so lucky. I mean, you know, 
I was a child and they were they just treated me like one basically I was lapping it up I, I, I got to meet John Wilson because one of the partners and sort of knew him and had fished with him so I, I had a moped so I'd go he actually gave me my first cart rods John Wilson did I had to go to pick up the echo sounder we used to borrow I mean now everyone's got one on their bloody phone and stuff but back then they were expensive and quite rare and we we, we before we started just following the cormorants um, yeah they used to use an echo sounder uh, with limited success to be fair because I've they're, they're, they're not all that um, but yeah I had, so I got to meet John Wilson I went up there and obviously my boss had prepped him and said oh Andrew's very young and went up there met him and he gave me a couple of Sundridge Proton car I'll never forget Sundridge I wish I still had them I sold them Sundridge Proton cart rods and they were really he said oh you don't want anything too big you want these and and I loved them and I had fears and I felt like a proper angler and oh my god and I was I was just at, since then I just absolutely loved every day of it it was it was just mad you know I, I was going uh, when I left um, school I was like they I found out about Sparshall because one of the lads who worked where I worked um, you know I was an apprentice I wasn't getting paid anything they'd give me they'd give me a some bait and stuff and some bits and pieces and a fishing tackle but I wasn't getting any money and this guy Rob had gone had been to Sparshall and I'd never heard of it before um, and he was there he'd come back and he was uh, he'd, he'd studied there and he was telling me all about it and the boss was like oh yeah it's really hard to get a job in fisheries you know blah 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 um, but I was intrigued by the whole thing um, but I didn't have enough grades to get in anyway not to get on the course that when I, I wanted to get on, I didn't have the right grade. Um, but luckily, um, my boss wrote me a, a reference, a good reference, and um, that's basically what got me on the course I wanted to go on because I was only really qualified to go on the sort of the learners beginners course, and um, I got on the the, the two year course at the time. And that's it. That was that was that was phase one of how I got into into fishery management. Really, from from when I was really really young, to go into Sparshall. So I've had him boy you half an hour of that, and uh, I'll do some more another day.